guys, so today I am going to be doing a video on the questions that you asked about Petland. So I originally wanted today's video to be a perfectionist trailer reaction because I had a few of you reach out to me and tell me that there was a new trailer out that was like three minutes long or something like that, but I can't find it anywhere. So what I'm going to do is if you guys know any other trailers of perfectionist that I haven't reacted to or given my opinion on, make sure to comment them down below so I can actually go and find them because I couldn't find the other one that you guys were talking about. So that is why I'm doing this instead. And then at the end of this video, I am announcing the winner of the Kylie Cosmetics giveaway. Was it supposed to be up yesterday? Yes. Is anyone surprised? No. So that is what we're going to be doing today and I am super excited. So let's just get into the video. So Copley asked, when I was looking for a dog, I looked at Petland and the prices were crazy. Why are the prices so high? even with the kit. So basically, yes, Petland's prices are very extreme. Um, there's no hiding that. Their prices are very overpriced, to be completely honest. You could find um, a breeder that is going to sell the dog for way less, but you're not going to get as much with the dog. At Petland, you do get everything that you need. You get a crate. You get, I think, a night of boarding, a year of free vet visits. Well, at least at mine, that's what they gave. Um, you also get toys, bowls, treats, literally everything, a bed, everything that you need for a dog. That does up the price a little bit. And then of course, all of the dogs at my pet land were AKC certified, so you do get their certification papers, and some of them had like their heritage papers where you could see everything. But yeah, so it definitely does raise the price and make it a little bit more since the dogs are have all their paperwork and certified and stuff. And I would recommend that if you're getting a dog, make sure that they have all their papers and all their certifications and everything like that before you buy the dog because it's very important. What sort of breeds were cheaper and which were expensive from Ashley? So Frenchies are always going to be the most expensive dogs and they normally range from about 5000 to 9000 or more than 9000 um, Next after that is English Bulldogs. So basically any of the Bulldog breeds are going to be the most expensive and that is because Frenchies are very difficult to breed in general. They have to be artificially inseminated and the females cannot give birth naturally. They have to be born in a c-section so it's very very difficult to breed Frenchies and makes it very expensive to do so so that's why they're so expensive. If you ever find somewhere online that says a blue Frenchie is like two thousand dollars then that is not correct and there's probably something wrong in that situation. Blue Frenchies are normally around five to six thousand from a breeder, um, and normal colors can be around two to three thousand. But at Petland, of course, that is kind of doubled since it is Petland, like I've said before. The cheapest dogs, it really depends. Um, coming in the cheapest is probably going to be around like a Shih Tzu or a Yorkie. Um, we had a lot of mixed breeds that were kind of lower priced, but some dogs did get really low priced just from being there for so long. So that is possible too, um, but I would say any of like the more normal breeds were ch on the cheaper end. But when I say cheaper, I mean like 1800 would probably be like the lowest a dog would be in Petland. So the hardest animal to take care of at Petland, I would definitely say more of the reptiles. I did not work with the reptiles or anything in that area, but there were a fish and reptile section in my store. And I would say that that would probably be the hardest, but I didn't really do that. I guess in the sense of dogs that were the hardest to take care of, it would be Frenchies or Bulldogs because you do have to clean their little noses and ears a lot since they do have all the wrinkles and you have to make sure that their wrinkles are kept clean to avoid infection and things like that. So next question is, do you get discounted dogs when you work there? So yes and no in a sense. Like it's not a thing going in that you are going to get a discounted dog if you work there or it's not a set thing to know that you can get a discount and it's not a set discount if you work there. It really all depends on the owners and what they want to do and who you are in the company. So of course a manager would 100% get bigger of a discount than maybe just me who was a normal employee. Um, I did get a discount with Bean. If I didn't, I would have never been able to afford her. But there is financing as well, which obviously I didn't do. They let me kind of just like pay in chunks. So I would pay like however much this day, however much this day until she was just paid off. But yes, there are discounts. It just really depends the discretion of the owners and what they feel and who you are to the company and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, they were really nice and generous with helping you out if you really wanted a puppy. So the last question I'm going to answer and then I'm going to get more into like behind the scenes of what Petland was like from pictures and videos that I have in my camera roll. 
The last one is, I'm going to look at dogs at Petland tomorrow. Any advice? So I know this was a week ago that they asked this, but I'm still going to answer it anyway if anyone else wants advice. I would suggest that you go in kind of knowing what you want. It does get a little difficult and it does get hard when people want to take out a bunch of dogs at once or if they come in and they want to see like 10 dogs. It's better if you come in kind of having a gist of exactly kind of the breed or the size you want and having a little bit of knowledge about that so that when you come in we can really zone in on that and help you find the perfect puppy for your family. I would also say go in knowing that you are going to be spending a lot of money and go in maybe prepared to finance if that's an option for you. Um, financing is obviously something that a lot of people do at Petland. Lastly, I would say make sure to kind of like write down all the questions you do have so that way you don't miss anything and really make sure that if we answer questions that you maybe write them down so you remember because there have been a lot of situations where people will come in not know their questions and then leave and the next day come back in and be like you didn't tell me this this and this and we may have told you that but it's a lot going on in that moment when you're picking out a puppy for your family and a lot of people don't retain everything that's going on and then they miss an important information about financing or something and then the next day you're freaking out actually I'm gonna answer a few more questions first I got a question about the rudest customer and I can't really think of the rudest I mean I'm sure there were ones but I can't really think of rudest, I can more just think of like crazy. One main situation where the girl came in and she was definitely younger and she financed the dog, I ran financing, she got approved, everything like that. And she took the puppy home because she got approved everything and then I think it was like the next day or the day after that, something went wrong with her financing. I think she put like the wrong last name on the paper and she ended up being like, I don't want the dog anymore and like just came back and returned the dog. And it was super weird. It was at the point where I wasn't really, like, I, my schedule was getting, like, smaller and smaller. So I wasn't really even there enough to, like, help and do anything. And she ended up returning the dog, which is so sad. I, I That's another thing. If you're going to go to Petland and you're going to get a puppy, make sure that you're ready for a puppy. No one wants a puppy to go home and then have to come back. And that just throws them off a lot. And I think it's, I don't even think they should be allowed to return them because it's not an item. It's a living thing. But we rather them come back to us and be safe than them just get rid of them somewhere else. We did have a situation where a lady walked up and tied the dog to the door and left. And the police were called. She was in a lot of trouble for abandonment because it is a living animal. And if you are the owner of that animal and you abandon it, that you can get a very large fine. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I remember that the police did get her and everything. And one of the employees actually ended up taking that puppy home. And obviously that puppy has lived with them ever since and it's their little family dog now so it's a really terrible story that ended really well but that was one thing that happened too I just don't understand how people could do that okay so now I'm trying to think what pictures and videos I even have okay so this one is the first dog that I ever sold at Petland it was my first day working too and I actually sold a dog on my first day which was like super exciting of course and they were super sweet little family um, I'm gonna blur faces just because privacy reasons and they bought a little Bichon something mix Shih Tzu mix it was the cutest little thing it looked like Chewbacca and they were super sweet and they made my first sale like super easy they already had a puppy at home everything like that they basically just came in and were like yeah we're getting a dog today I was like awesome okay I don't know who's calling me I'm scared hello Hello. Hi, this is Howard Williams. With an no, thank you. But I remember this was before I had Bean. This was when she was still in there and I loved her so much. I used to take Bean out and literally just let her like run around the store and the other puppies would be so confused. But like I literally, Bean was my dog in the store. Like I owned her before I owned her. Ugh. This was the cutest little Pomeranian ever. So I remember this family as well. They were super sweet. They called in and their son, I believe, was paralyzed and he really wanted a puppy. And they were telling me about their family and I remember getting teary eyed because it was so nice that I was being like I was able to give them some sort of happiness and help their family in some sort of way and it was so awesome and I remember they were so sweet 
Um, so this was the English Bulldog that we had. We named him Rocco. He used to run around the store all the time. He was adorable. One of my other coworkers was like obsessed with him. And he went home that day. This was the day I got Bean. Oh my goodness. This was the night before I got Bean. I, we had like a broom out and we were just like pushing her on the broom. Oh my mom's home, she could probably see me filming. So this was the, like by far, possibly my favorite sale that I ever had because the family was so cute and sweet and I loved the little girl so much. So she was obsessed with this little King Charles and every time we would take out a different puppy, she would be like, where's the orange one? Bean, why are you crying? And she would literally ask for the orange one. And basically the family was having a little bit of trouble with the price and we were trying to negotiate price and figure out what we could do to make this happen for them. And basically they ended up telling me that it was either a trip to Hawaii or this puppy and that they needed to just think about that for a little bit. And I said, no problem, take all the time you need. And when I came back, they were like, we can always go to Hawaii, but we'll never be able to find this puppy again. And I was just like, they were like, so we're not going to Hawaii. And I was like, oh my God, it was so cute. The mom was crying. I was like, I have tears. The little girl was so happy that she got the orange one. It was just, it was so sweet. I think that was my favorite part of working there, being able to, you know, give families a forever little buddy. And it was just, it was so cute. So the next story that I could really think about talking about is when I sold the $8,000 dog. But I think I'm gonna save that for a different video. And I'm gonna end that off here, basically. If you guys have any more Petland questions, make sure to comment them down below. The next video I really wanna do is that Pretty Little Liars one, if I can find the, the links to it. So if you know what I'm talking about, then make sure to comment them down below as well. And if you like Petland, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't yet, subscribe and turn on post notifications because I post videos every Wednesday, but sometimes different days. So just make sure to turn on post notifications. I should probably stop saying that I post every Wednesday. I should fix that. But I will see you guys next. Oh, wait, the winner. Oh my God, Nicole. I almost just ended this video without announcing the winner. Okay, so I'm using like a random comment generator. So the winner is awesome underscore Danny. So congratulations. I'm going to message you on Instagram right now. I just found your Instagram. But thank you guys so much for entering. If you did, I'm going to do more giveaways soon. Um, if you enjoy giveaways, make sure to let me know. So I know to do more. But that is pretty much it now for today's video. I can't believe I almost did that. Like, but now that is it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and I will see you guys next time with a new video. Bye.